caution is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked and we are continuing with our top 100 games of all time. This one is 90 through 81. Um, I had a question I was going to ask you. Last, oh, my question was, uh, did you look at your old list while you were making this one? Or did you make this one and then just... Oh, I didn't. I, I didn't, didn't look, look at my other one either until I made, no. the, made the top 100. No, because that's why eventually here, eventually you're going to start seeing like some big ebb and flows. Gotcha. You know, like some 50 point drops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a few on, on the last segment just because yeah. I mean, shit happens. Uh, this segment, I have five new games. And when, by new, if you didn't watch the last one, new, I mean new to the list. Yeah, I have three new to the list and all the rest of them fell. Uh, <laughs> so this, is, this is a depressing ten here. All right. So. Uh, yeah, I have five new <laughs> ones. Most of mine fell. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now Kat is here to provide negative comments on all of my games for yep. some reason. So, uh, she has permission to do mine. Out of a hundred, <laughs> I'm probably going to dislike most of them. <laughs> So, number 90 is, okay, I thought this was stuck together, I'm like, is two games. Uh, Say Bye to the Villains fell from 63 now, so that is 27. Um, I've never played it. you never played Say Bye to the Villains? So, Say Bye to the Villains is a... I know what it is. I, I right. Like, as far as... Is a super fun game uh, where you are a regular citizen in Japan uh, in a village about to be invaded by these these monsters and you have a knight to basically get ready and fend them off. Uh, very luck heavy game like you you have uh, basically these bunch of cards that you can use to stack up like your character because you have attributes you have you know strength, speed and uh, I think life. Um, and then each person has like, the number of players is how many enemies are coming to attack, because everyone has to be ready to fight one person. Uh, but that person has a bunch, a certain number of cards that are face down next to them that are their attributes. So throughout the game, you're playing cards that let you look at them secretly, and then it's like... Um, and basically, you win or lose the game. Uh, you lose if, the ge if anyone dies. Or if you meet a condition where... Uh, that you're not supposed to, for example, like one enemy could be like, uh, like you're not supposed to kill them, but you have more power than their health, so you do, you lose. Right. Uh, so you're trying to do be as efficient as possible with your card to figure out, okay, this is the one I'm going to get ready for, I'm going to fight this person, but half the time you're playing, you're like, okay, that's not going to happen anymore, so I need to fight this person instead. And everyone's just, it's on a whim, uh, it's such a blast, I think it's very cooperative driven. Um, just because you can give cards to people, you can play cards on them, um, and and I th I think it's I think it's a blast. There was supposed to be another one. I think it was supposed to be a western, but I haven't seen anything on it. I believe it's actually, uh, yeah, AEG. But yeah, see, that's another one. Those like the, the same size box. Yeah. The one I was talking about. Yeah, but I mean, I haven't seen them do anything with it. But it's still a fun, very difficult game. Uh, say bye to the villains. All right, my. Number 90. Oh, you're a negative thing. Oh, yes. Oh, I have played this one. Um, from what I remember of playing it, because I think I've only played it once, um, I just remember it was one of those games that turned into uh, Seth is basically going to have to take my turns for me. <laughs> so, just because it, it just didn't click with me. just didn't click. It was a little complicated because there were really specific rules that went for certain things. So. All right. My number 90 is possibly... The only good version of this franchise. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> it, it, it fell from uh, fifty-five. It was fifty-five last year. It's ninety now. It's pandemic. The cure. The cure. Um, I say possibly because I, I mm. I'm going to make myself try <laughs> uh, the Fall of Rome yeah. one just to see, but um, I love Pandemic the Cure because I like dice and. It changes the base game pandemic into a much faster, um, easier game to, t I guess, teach. I guess, kind of. It's <coughs> you, it's less um, alpha mm. prone, yeah, too, that's true. because I mean everybody has their own. When you pick out you you pick your character, everybody every character has their very own set of dice, 
with our own unique faces and everything. And you roll those dice, everybody rolls, and then you do what you're going to do. And it's, it has the same base ideas as Pandemic, where you're, there's outbreaks and there's cards you can purchase to kind of help you out and stuff. I can't remember what they're called, what they're called in Pandemic, those the cards that help, that, the action cards or whatever that help you do stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, um, I think they're just player cards. Just, just player cards. Yeah. That, the, they're, but in the player, because you know how you have the cities, but then there's those ones that you have a special action that you can play to help you oh, like fly events? from one place to another. Yeah, events, oh, yeah, yeah just events. So they have those in this, too. It's pretty much just the dice version of Pandemic. Just, um, I like to have, how every player has their own dice. That is neat. Um, yeah. And then once you start, when you kill virus, there's this little plastic circle thing out here, and as you take dice off of places before they break, they go into the middle and then you can capture them with jars and put them in front of you. So you're using your dice. So your hand size gets smaller the more dice you use to capture those. And then you try to do a cure roll and you have to get <coughs> over a certain number. Oh, okay. And if you get over that certain number, you found the cure. And then that, and then it becomes the same like pandemic where it's easier to knock oh, dice gotcha. back. Because once you run out of, uh, um, once you run, your bag runs out of dice, mm -hmm. or color, whatever, you're, you're done. It's the same as running out of cubes yeah. in Pandemic. Um, I know I, I give Pandemic a lot of crap, but but this is like so much simpler. Like the yeah. game takes half the time and you're just That's rolling, fair. rolling and rolling dice. Yeah, Plus I, um, games. I think Fall of Rome, um, I'm excited for it. First when I heard about it, I was like, come on, yeah, like, but, really? Like, but from what I hear, it's Fingers basically of the not, realm is what I'm yeah, hearing. I've heard it's nothing like Pandemic. It's like, why <laughs> put the name on it? Why don't they just make another fucking game? Mass Effect? Because it'll sell because it's like Pandemic. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what Mass Effect? All right. <laughs> 89. My 89 is new to the list. It's not, a, it's not a brand new game, but it is, I think, it came out last year. And that is Vikings Gone Wild. You have not played this game. No, I, 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 went, I got this too. wall at Gen Con. I actually met with the guy who was selling it to me, and then I played it also a couple times while at Gen Con. Vikings Gone Wild is a fantastic deck building game. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty much uh, straightforward deck builder. You are uh, trying to buy cards to be able to meet objectives, and then uh, it's, it's also kind of a, ta it's a tableau building game as well. So you're using these cards like beer and gold to buy breweries or gold mining places just to uh, upgrade your town hall to get more points and then meet objectives which will get you more points um, and also you can fight each other but the cool thing about fighting is that it's only for the benefit of the like attacker points wise so it's not like if I'm, oh, I'm gonna attack your whatever your town hall it's not like if I win I destroy your stuff I just get points based off how many successful attacks that I have um, so it's like, okay, I attacked you three times, I was successful each time, I get ten points. Uh, none of your stuff is affected. It just has to, it, right. You just have to put something on it that shows it has been attacked, but just be, just so other people, like, if I attacked her in, and I won, you couldn't attack her, right. because that's not fair, because you know she can't defend it. Right. So you, have, you would have to attack me. And then, uh, it has a bunch of expansions that I also have, I just haven't had a chance to play them. One adds, like, elementals to it others uh there's two smaller ones which add like guilds and stuff so then it becomes like team on team um, not quite sure if i want to do that but i think the element one is what a lot of people are saying is really cool right. so it's just a solid deck building game i just really like the fact that you can attack and get that benefit or that feeling of yeah i attacked you but the person being attacked isn't pissed off because their shit's destroyed yeah that one, that's a good thing so vikings gone wild is my number 89 no, I'll skip the ones um, that you haven't played. I think that one sounds fun. It is fun. Yeah. All right, my number 89 is a game that won't be on the list very long once I play the new version of it, and that is Thunderstone Advance. Oh, the Thunderstone Quest one? Uh, yeah, I want to play Quest. This one was 57 last time, and it's 89 now. Damn. Another big drop. Um, just because I don't have it, because I sold it all when it was out of print, because I knew Quest was coming. I just mm -hmm. haven't gotten Quest yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, this was kind of the answer, the original Thunderstone that this is based on was the answer to um, Dominion, because Dominion oh, was okay. themeless, and then Thunderstone came in and it added theme to the same mechanics, more, okay. more or less, where you're using the cards that you're buying and stuff to go into the 
dungeon or the the caves dungeons uh, and um, trying to kill bad guys. Um, it's it's competitive. It's not a co or a cooperative deck builder at all. You're going into these deals. You're trying to become the most awesome monster killer throughout the deal. You can upgrade your characters as you go and stuff like that. What quest is going to be though? It adds it adds a story. To yeah, it. I've heard it's completely different. Yeah, in and, advance. And I mean, it has the same base mechanics. <coughs> it's just it, it adds story to it yeah. more. More theme, like. Yeah. So I really want to try it out and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like deck building games. Mm -hmm. So Thunderstone's one of my early ones that yeah. I I played and I take jumped into advance and all that stuff. And it's just a really cool. I wish that it was co-op though. In a way, I, I wish they had done a co-op, right. like a fantasy co-op. Yeah, like, and, and I think Quest has the option. I know that they, one of their their. Uh, Kickstarter things was solo play co-op. Yeah, that they were working on. I don't know if it's out yet or whatever, but but anyway, Thunderstone Advance. It's just a really good fantasy deck building game that has a little theme into it. Alrighty, all right. My number eighty-eight was sixty last year, uh, so twenty-eight spaces, and that is Scoville. Scoville is a fantastic game that I actually got to play by borrowing your copy about mm -hmm. crossbreeding peppers. Um, uh, one of my favorite things about Scoville is that breeding like mechanic, that, that chart that you have yeah. where you will plant colored peppers uh, in, in this garden and then you and other people are like moving around this garden uh, trying to land in between them and it's like, okay, I land between a green and a red and that gives me blue. Whatever. It, it doesn't. But, so that it's like, so you, you're trying to place these ones and move so you can get the combinations that you need to be able to build recipes to get points. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's essentially the game, but that chart is so neat. And you can plan ahead. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to put these two here. This clear one and this clear one will get me two clear ones. And I need two clear ones to do this recipe. And then I can get this and this and this. And that will give me 30 points. <laughs> it's 118 on my list this year. 118? Yeah. It has an expansion in the lab I haven't played, but, I mean, the neat thing about moving around this board is you can block each other, uh, so, like, some, I know some people, they'll just follow them around, like, the entire time, and just get, get what they're trying to get, and then eventually branch off, but it's, it's a very smart, smart game, and, uh, and I enjoy it quite a bit. Scoville. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing. Like that. I don't remember much you don't, about it. You don't remember it? No, I remember it. I just don't remember much about it. Um, you also had, there was an auction, I think, at the beginning. Uh, trying to, you just got to basically pick between a certain number of cards just to have. They gave you recipes. Um, that was pretty much it because you, you were just, there was just recipes off on the side that you yeah, were you're, just You're using your peppers if yeah. you have to buy chili recipes yeah. and stuff. Yes, the negative is that it didn't come with a free ghost pepper. <laughs> no, but uh, the opening skit is me eating a ghost pepper. But that one took a while well, to I, get to. And I think it's funny because they don't, for some reason, they don't call them ghost peppers. And yeah, they're all weird. Peppers. Yeah, yeah, they're all the all the yeah. recipes are like just fun, yeah. fun ones. Which, which uh, one thing I did like about that game that's cool is, I think it was for the colorblind people mm -hmm. is because all each pepper was a different height yeah yeah so like the ones were really so small and then they got taller so they could kind of match them up with the right cards. right so it kind of made it inclusive yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's, that's the word neat. i'm looking for that's it is pretty neat, neat. so scoville 88 all my right numbers. my number 88 we will talk about on your list in some segment um <laughs> it was 74 last year and it's slipped those 14 spots just because I haven't played it for a long time. It's Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Oh, okay. Um, I love this game. It's a wonderful uh, deduction game. Uh, I've played it a handful of times with you and with the other people, and you know, and we haven't ever even played it with the witness. Witnesses. Oh yeah, I've heard, with uh, that I've stuff heard either. either. I've heard with deception. <coughs> sorry, uh, I'm stealing your thunder, but I've heard with good. deception, like those extra rolls are yeah. actually fun to do because yeah, resistance yeah. tried that too, and it was just too much. It's just every time we played it, it's always we've always had new people in there. Oh yeah. So it's like I, mean, I think if you're playing with the same, then you mm -hmm. throw those stuff in. But 
Um, you talked about uh, Mysterium earlier, right? Yep. So this is like Mysterium. There's one person that is the uh, um, investigator. Is that what he's called? Scientist. Scientist that scientist. knows the yeah. and stuff. Oh. So the scientist knows the the things used, and they know the murderer. <laughs> So then they have to choose three things. No, yeah, they choose three things mm -hmm. that the murderer used. And then they have to give nonverbal uh, uh, hints on the board using these little bullet, <laughs> these yeah, deals. Yeah, these bullet markers. Because uh, you, you lay out these deals that have uh, multiple options, uh, like day, night. Whatever. Yeah, it's and, like weather. Or yeah, there's all kinds of motive, stuff. and it's like, uh, and you're, so you're giving little hints. And they're all vague as hell. <laughs> deals. Yeah, they're super vague, and then it's like, I mean, you can get into so many disagreements on this, and no, think you have it perfectly, and then it's just like, no, because yep. you get you get one guess. You get one guess. But it's three rounds, I believe, right? Because. Because you can go around the first yeah. round, and you can just ask questions. You're right. And then, yeah. and then the scientists can change if they, if they feel like they need to change their hint mm -hmm. a little bit and replace a board or whatever. And then you go around a second time and go, but the third time you have to guess. And when you take your guess, you're, you're out. And you're done if you're wrong. And if you don't get, you could have the person, pick, like if Seth was the murderer, and I had Seth picked out, but I only got two of the three things. No, it's only two Or items. one of the two one things. One of the two, yeah. If I only got one of the two things correct, yeah, I'm not right. And uh, you have to have the person picked out and the two cards to get it, get it correct. And it's difficult. It yeah. is difficult. I mean, I I don't know. I think maybe we've caught the person once or twice. Um, In my experience playing, I think I've only ever gotten it right once. Yeah. So it's it's a difficult game. And it was luck. I want to try all those extra things because I know there's an Heard expansion. The expansion is amazing. Right. And, and I have the expansion. I don't own the game personally. I want to. It's one that's always on my wish list, but I just play Chad's mostly yeah. whenever we're yep. doing that stuff. And But it's a it's a really cool... Uh, what is that word I'm looking for? Deduction. Deduction. <laughs> yep, that's the word. Board game. Yep, yep. My number eight, it's a really good board game. My number 87 is new to the list, but it is not brand a brand new game. It is a cooperative game that we have played, actually last time you were up here, uh, called The Captain is Dead. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, I thought it was on my list last year, but I guess, guess not. Did we play it last year? Uh, I don't know. I think I got, I don't remember. We didn't bring it into his house until last year, or to the table. Yeah. I know that. Um... Oh, you are right. Yep. So, The Captain is Dead is a cooperative game where you are on a ship. Um, and this is a very weird, like, weird style game. Um, I don't know how you would des describe the art. Yeah, it's almost kind of like that super hot, kind of like, uh, that, that, like, that kind of artwork. It's uh, yeah. where it's... Stylized clip art. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, you are, uh, someone on the, sh uh, Someone who works on the ship that the captain died, so everything is in in a panic, and uh, you are being attacked by aliens and and invaders on the ship, and there are different segments. And oh boy, is this game hard! <laughs> uh, near impossible. Like it, it does remind me of kind of one of those games where you need specific people to to do well. It's do. Uh, like the first time we played this, we played as a four player game, and we ended up winning. Uh, I think we also played on easy. Um, <laughs> per my recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so you have your own special role and special ability. Um, then you are just trying to run in these different sections of the, of the board, have special abilities. Like you can go and get blueprints, or you can go and shoot missiles off and destroy aliens because it's kind of like a, a tier thing of, of uh, bad stuff that's going to happen to you. Um, but sections of the ship will get shut down based off events, so then you have to spend cards uh, to bring them back up, and then, oh man, is it just, but here's the thing, like, I really, really like this game, even though it's super hard, because cooperative games for me have to feel cooperative, and everyone has to work together, everyone's special ability has to be utilized well, otherwise you, you will fail. Uh, funny enough, I think this game was built off Game Crafter. It was. Initially. The first time, and then got picked up by AEG, 
uh, and they have two other sections. One of them that just came out is Lockdown. That one's almost impossible from what I've been. Hearing. Really, I mean, I'm sure it is because there's there's <coughs> three parts. There's this one, but if you the the theme is that you escape through a uh, a warp drive, but then the second one, I can't remember what it's called, but you like wreck into an asteroid, so then you have the whole new game there, and then the third one is Lockdown. Uh, and I really want to try them all, but this one is such a blast, so that's why it's my 87. What's your negative on that one? Well, I already said it. Um, if you do not play with certain characters, you have a real low chance of winning. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Got to play with the janitor. <laughs> janitor is badass. Yeah. I can't remember what I was the moment I played that. Not the janitor. I was the janitor. <laughs> I think I was the teleporter, and every time the te you were the teleporter, the te he kept was... going down, and I'm like, I'm useless! I was like a... Or or oh, I think so too. Was a soldier I, or something. I was the captain. Um, all right, so my <laughs> eighty-seven. Uh, I don't have all the iterations of this game. I need to get the, all the iterations of this game. It fell from seventy-eight to eighty-seven. It's Epic Spell Wars. Um, okay. I have the first two. I still need to get the other two. Um, the Pleasure Palace and whatever the third one was. I can't remember what the third one was. Uh. <clears throat> But, uh, oh, so I have I Test to Kill, know. or the, whatever, uh, the first two. Anyway, um, so you are picking one of these crazy wizards, um, and you, are, you have a hand of cards, and you're putting down a spell, and you're trying to be the last wizard standing, trying to wipe out the other ones. Um, so you are laying down one, two, or three parts of a spell, um, the shorter spells will always fire off first. If there's a tie for a number of cards and there's an initiative number, that'll let you fire off the spell. So you, that's kind of a gamey thing you need to do because if you both have two hit points, mm -hmm. you got to try to be the <laughs> one that plays first, you know. Um, but you uh, have to put them in a particular order. There's the I can't remember what source, it's. quantity, and delivery. Okay, yeah, because and you can match them if you want, mix uh, mix them up, whatever. But if you uh, use the same type of spell. It gets after you get extra dice on mm -hmm. some of the roll ones, um, so it's super random as far as the dice and where it goes. And some cards, uh, it will say it attacks the person with the least amount or lesser, mm -hmm. or lower amount. Or left than and you or right, left yeah. and right. I mean, it's just totally. It's just a free for all. It's epic spell wars of battle wizards. I mean, they're just they're just out there. It's fucking game. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a video game, just like a an arcade game. You're sitting out there just bashing each other. And stuff, but this the art is such a is... fun one to play with the family. Yeah, <laughs> I have played with the family. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, um, bring it to your church event. <laughs> <laughs> but the art is really um, raw and grotesque and gross. There's blood flying everywhere. There's balls <laughs> you know, all over the place. And the, the actual the newest the newest expansion has a draw bag that is actually it's a nutsack. It's a nutsack. You draw MTDs, right? Which right. Are magically transmitted oh, diseases, <laughs> but. But, uh, and is that the one that has the trump card? Yeah. One of, it, one of them has a trump card where his face is an asshole. <laughs> and it's just shitting. And, oh man, I'm like, yes. yes. But anyway, so, it's it's Cryptozoic. And this is probably, in my opinion, one of their best games. Just because some of the games may drag. Because you get, run into those games where you're playing with four or five people. where Because you, you have to be get two last, two last Wizard Standing Tokens to win. But inevitably, you play and it's like... Each person Every gets person one, can win, and then it comes down to the last deal because it's a you know if somebody wins they're gonna crap on you first. I mean, right. you know, so the games do tend to take a little while, but when, in the rule book it says when you're announcing your spell you're supposed to read it like a wizard, as, so, as and that's one of the character. rules I make people do. Really? Play. Oh, I do. We not. have to read it like the wizard. <laughs> you know, none shall pass. You got the whole Gandalf thing going. Yep. Just, just, just because it's hilarious, right? You know? um, but yeah, they're, it's they're it's raunchy. it's hilarious, and it's it's just a good fun. I could I'd only imagine playing this game. Hammered would be God. That is hilarious. True. That's true. <laughs> Alrighty, funny enough that your uh, eighty seven was that my eighty six was at forty nine and has moved thirty seven spaces. Called Whiz War. Oh yeah. So two wizard games in a row. Wowie! One, one, one good one and one boring. One. <laughs> How is Wiz War boring? It's just as the, it's just chaotic as Epic Spell Wars. This is not grotesque. It's not you're not pulling yeah. chits out of a nut sack. Then it's not fun. And if you're not touching balls, then what are you doing with your life? You're not. Uh, Wiz War is a fantastic arena fighting game 
where you would just have a wild assortment of magic cards and your whole goal is to either steal to get two points and that's either by getting two of other pe your opponent's treasure chest to your spot or by killing an opponent or inevitably being the last wizard standing right. unless you uh unless you know someone else gets two points first but this one is just just as whimsical not as grotesque but you're moving around probably more gamey because you are moving around an arena board casting these spells uh, like uh, lightning bolt that'll shoot you know a certain number of spaces by how much energy you give it and then it can ricochet off walls and hit a bunch of people mm -hmm. there's uh, items that you can have like oh man I remember one time playing this because uh, that I um, was in a person's home spot and then someone had like someone built a wall so it blocked me from going that way then another person built a wall so I was literally trapped mm -hmm. and then I was like okay cool cool and you can attack the wall and eventually destroy it but I had a card that uh, teleported in, in like swap spaces mm -hmm. so I'm like cool the person who trapped me and I'm like uh-huh okay so I'm gonna play this and now you're here and then I'm over there and he just he thought it was hilarious yeah uh, but just so much whimsy going on and uh, it's it, it's so much fun like I really like this game there's so many decks of like schools um, I quit doing the I quit doing the big book of spells just because I wanted more structure. I used to just shuffle all the cards mm -hmm. together. Now I have them all separated, and then I'll do like an app and decide which ones to play as. Yeah. So they have different miniatures where you can trans uh, <laughs> tra transform into these creatures that give you abilities. Like the and beast, beast, yeah, yeah, the beast, beast, your forces, yeah, yeah. Beast, yeah. And so you actually swap out your miniature, and then they have a bunch of items, and it's it's such a blast. I, I really like this game. Yeah. 86. Uh, you gotta play with the right number of people, because someone can get shoehorned, and if they don't get lucky, and have good cards, and they just have, you know, more like, throw up walls, and they're yeah. stuck somewhere, it's like, God damn it! Yeah, that's true. I would say four. Is probably a really good number with well, this. It's way more interesting. I would say yeah. just even numbers, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, so probably. I've dialogue. played at three, and yeah, you definitely have to make a conscious decision to like. Yeah, because yeah, you might also up. just accidentally make like, well, I'm gonna target this person while it involuntarily somebody else is like, I'm also gonna target that person. Right. That person and, and inevitably, when you're playing yeah. a competitive capture the flag mm -hmm. deal, you if you one person get hammered, you're gonna go and finish them off. That way, it makes it easier for you to go. Yeah. That's right. why even numbers are always good on this. Right. Right. Yeah. So four people is a really good number. <laughs> yeah. Eight All right. Six. My eighty six is new to the list. Ooh. Um, and it is on this list. I'm going to admit, it's on this list for theme alone. Okay. Um, At 86. Huh? And, well, <laughs> because it would have been higher on my first four plays, but then it's not new enough. Like, and there's an expansion that just came out, so I want to play with it to see kind of where, if it's going to stay on the list or not. And it's Fallout. Um, <laughs> for, for, uh, for Fantasy Flight. Um, <coughs> I can see why. I am, I'm going to go ahead and say a self-proclaim myself as the biggest Fallout fan. <laughs> and and, and the, just because that's my... Are you making Fallout porn on the internet? Yep. And you're not the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all mine. Super <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, you know, I've done, I've played every Fallout iteration since 91 or whatever yeah, it was on PC, no, you know. Oh, no, 76. You have not played Fallout 76. You're not a true fan. Yeah. Because that's not a real it's Fallout a, no, game. It's a Fallout game. It was made by Bethesda. It's a Fallout game. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm a traditional Fallout <laughs> fan. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing that out of, out of, um. What's the word? <laughs> out of protest. Pride? <laughs> out of protest, I'm not playing you that because it is, not, it, is, <laughs> it, is, it is not an online game. I will, that's a whole other argument that we'll we all get agree. Into. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so it's really cool because, and I know you didn't work I for you guys. I know. And, and Loved it the first time. Right, and well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's, what, there's four storylines in it. Um, and, and I... Each, I played each one of them once, had a blast with all four of those. When you go back and do it a second time, um, those story cards keep hitting the mm. same ones over and over. Isn't and that weird how that, how that works in video games, though? 
Like if I were, like if I were the finished Gloomhaven, I don't know if I'd go back because it's like I've played the Halo games multiple yeah. times and love right. it every single oh, yeah. time. But it's like I find it hard to go back to a story driven board game. I find mm -hmm. it hard to reread books, and but yet I played yeah. Mass Effect. Um, how many times? Right. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 it's, I it's weird is. because yeah, you're right. You, like you've played the Fallout games multiple times. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're getting the same quests over and over. Right. But it's weird in a board game. I think they needed to have more of those. Uh, they the, needed the, the, the normal the normal story cards. They yeah. needed to be like maybe. Like Big. there was there was twenty twenty some cards mm -hmm. in that deck, and you kept seeing the same ones. Like, what are you gonna do if you go, are you gonna go and find uh, uh, check out the noise or you're not? You know, yeah. that card kept popping up. You know, like, well, if I go check out this, I'm gonna go I find know. junk or yeah, yeah. or not. It's like they needed that deck needed to be like a hundred cards mm -hmm. so that you didn't see those constantly. You know, yeah. Um, with it being Fantasy Flight, that's where they cheaped out because the game itself, like, I like the battling system. I like the Vats dice. I liked all that stuff. So um, my cooperative. Like, did you play it solo? Do you play it solo? I have played it solo. It's probably better solo. Yeah. Because you don't have the bullshit um, of like, okay, I I started this whole quest by myself, and you finish it? What the fuck? Well, and I we never did run into that issue a whole okay. lot. Um, but uh, that the expansion that came out, I really want to try it. I I gave my copy to another guy in the group, and, mm -hmm. and I, he's going to get the expansion, so we're gonna, I'm going to play through those with him. Um just to see. It's one of those things that and they probably could have put more money into the game and turn it into a legacy game. Yeah. Because it once you have gotten through it, it's not... You know, you know an LCG or probably some, would have been cool. Right. Like, kind of like what they're doing um, with Arkham Horror. So we'll see, you know. I, I don't know what this expansion brings into it because the, the initial scenarios from the base game was, you know... Fallout 3, mm -hmm. the expansions for Fallout 3, there was six, fall, uh, Fallout 4 and Far Harbor for Fallout 4. Those were the... Yeah, I've heard the, all those deals. I didn't, play them. I didn't like Fallout so 4. I loved all... Uh, so all I didn't care it. for the DLC. Um, Except for the shitstorm that's happening right now. <laughs> I think I gave, I think I gave just, Fallout yeah. A 2. Like, I, I didn't... Like, yeah, and well, and see, my whole thing changes, though. Like, those first four plays, I was all about it. It was yeah. like, I was like, oh, this is awesome, you know, but then... Yeah. They didn't. It's not touted as a one and done kind mm -hmm. of deal because yeah. Arcadia Quest and stuff like that. You play those. You can play those campaigns more, you know, over and over and right. stuff. This one, you, their decks were so small. Yeah. It's just like, okay, I know what I'm gonna do here. It's like right. Right, reading a. It's like reading a 15 page which way book. It's like that's true. It's like okay, I know which way I'm going. Yeah. So, that, so it, it it's probably not gonna stay here very long. It's new to the list this time because it was there mm -hmm. and for like I said for Be Malone. And we'll see what happens. Maybe the expansion does something. I, I don't know much about it. Um, but anyway, that's that's that one. Where, All right. Where it was? Oh, 86. <laughs> 86. My 85 oh. is uh, a game that we actually just recently played. Uh-oh. Uh, it fell from 21. It was as uh, so 60, 64 spaces. Oh, what did we play? I, at first, I, like, I, I didn't realize... Uh, like, I was like, okay, fell 21 spaces, and I'm like, no, it oh, fell no, from it fell from, 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 from 21. That's Roll for the Galaxy. Oh. So that dropped quite... So I'm curious to see why, because I uh, just bought this game. So. Did you? Oh. Okay, so it fell, it, it really fell due to lack of play. Okay. Like, that's literally all it was. Yeah. Uh, this game is still on the list, and we just played it, um, but it was kind of like, I didn't force myself to play it, but I was like, it's been a long time, I really want to play right. this game. Uh... And no, it is such a solid game. I, I had a blast. Um, I love the dice aspect and how, yeah, yeah, there is some luck to it, but there's so much mitigation where if you're like, man, I really need to settle right now. Crap, I didn't get any. You can take one of your dice, make them a dictator, and then move another dice to what the action that you want to take. I love the secretive nature of it to where it's like, okay, this is the action I'm for sure going to do. Wait. They really need to settle too, so maybe I'll try and do something else and hope that they settle, but put dice behind it because you can go off of mm -hmm. the actions that uh, your opponents do. Uh, it, it's pretty much a solitaire game. That's literally the only interaction between players. Like, I don't destroy your stuff, I don't right. steal your goods, I don't do any of that. We're exploring our own section of the galaxy. I love the tableau, well, it's not really tableau building, sorry, but you're just putting tiles down and you get, if it's developments, you get. You know, really good. Like last time we played, my starting ability was I was able to take two white dice and make them explorers or settlers. 
So I was like, okay, I have some mitigation there. Right. Then I got another technology that was I could take any two dice and make them anything. So I, I never got hosed on actions. Uh, and that's kind of the way I built it. But the, the game itself, it can be very confusing to a lot of people, especially when they see that screen. They're like, oh, what is all this? But it's like, okay, look, this is literally all you do. It's That's why I've waited for so long. Yeah. Before, because it looks like, because I've never played Race for the Galaxy I have not either. Because I've heard the icon, uh, iconography is just... Yeah, the iconography is only in that screen, though. Right. Like, it, it, this is one of those games where the iconography, they also have text to describe what's going on. Like, my friend was, it was new, it was brand new to him. Once I explained the game, he was able to look at his own screen and figure right. out what was going on. Okay. Um, what about the expansion? Ambition? Yes. Uh, is it it's not necessary. It's not necessary. It just gives you a little bit more. It adds okay. two dice. I've heard it's a really good one. It is good. Uh, but if you were, I would stick to just the base game. It just adds more, fuck me, uh, new tiles and two new two new dice. An okay. orange die, which basically has, um, some of them have dual uh, symbols, mm -hmm. so you, you have some more choice on, on which way, way you want to do. But some of them also have a money symbol, which means that they go back into your cup if you use them. Okay. Instead of, because after you use all your people, you, they go back to your citizenry, then you have to pay a dollar for each dice to go back into your cup for the right. workers. Now, what I really like about this game is the kind of the flow of it is you, you're kind of going to do a small turn, small turn, small turn, small turn, big turn. Because you're eventually going to start accumulating a lot of money to buy all your dice back and get some massive turn, um, or you can you can try and you know work and just okay you have medium turn medium turn kind of stuff like that. Is this one of those games? I mean, because I don't know a whole lot about it, mm -hmm. I just got it because it, it talked up quite a bit. So, are you like if somebody takes a turn, you can't do the same thing? Is that what oh you very much do the or same what thing? Is there? Is there so something so like you that have that? you have five actions that you can do. And you have, uh, you know, you roll your dice behind your screen, mm -hmm. and you take one of those dice, and you put it onto one of the five the actions. It's a little little board behind your screen. Okay. And that is the action that you for sure are going to pick, because there are five tiles out, okay. and they're all on their back with an X through it. Mm -hmm. Everyone sets their dice up, because you put the one on the cardboard thing, and the other ones you organize them how you want, uh, based off the symbols, and they're just underneath it. Okay. You reveal... Then it, everyone that had a dice placed on, those are the actions that are going to happen. So if I was exploring, Cat was settling, and you wanted to ship, then it's like, okay, great. Those are the three actions that will for sure happen. But if you had dice underneath your explore, you also get to explore because oh, okay. I did it. Gotcha. That's so what, that was the thing. I, yeah. I knew there was something that interfered. Yeah, that's people, how, so that's something. why you yeah. can look at what people gotcha. are wanting to do because there were times where I was like, she really needs to develop, so I'm not going to worry about me choosing that because she'll do it. And she didn't do it, and I'm like, okay, that's, that well, that's the part game, that I was... It's a wild card playing that game with me. You cannot think <laughs> off of what I'm going to do. I was like, why didn't you <laughs> develop? She's like, I didn't get the die. I'm like, you can dictate and make it. And I'd be like, oh, yeah. And then um, the friend that we were playing with was like, oh, if she was smart, she's, she'll do this. And yeah, so and I was like, oh, uh, I was there was actually times where I was producing... And uh, my friend was shipping, so but I had dice underneath ship, and he had dice. So we were helping each other out because right, right. you can ship goods, which are dice and and stuff like that. It's just such a smooth game. Uh, I played this again after I made the list, so it actually probably wouldn't be as high as it is now because by the time I made this, it had been a while mm -hmm. since I played it. But I I will never get rid of it because it is so okay. solid. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I heard they're making another expansion, probably. But I said I picked it up for twenty bucks. Oh yeah, that's definitely a steal. Um, so it was a good deal. I, I think it's great. I played it at three. Mm -hmm. I played it at four. Like a solo variant too. I don't know. If there is a solo variant. I've tried it. But they also in the expansion that adds objectives. That was another thing. That that's a variant. We right. didn't play with those. But if you want some more ways to get points, that's right. that's another way. Okay. It's a very solid game. Um, What's your negative on that one? Um, all, I, all I remember is that when we played it the second time... Um, well, it, it's not the second time. What was it for me? No, we've played it quite a bit. I don't remember actually. playing it quite a bit. I don't remember playing it once before. Well, anyway. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> well, either way, um, I just remember picking it back up again was not as smooth as I would have liked it to have been. And even at the end, uh, Devin had said, he's like... He's like, I, I suck at this game. He's yeah. Like, I don't get it. And it's only because... Your first time is kind of your throwaway game where you need to learn. Yeah. You need to learn how everything works fully to get into the groove. So that's right. my eighty-five. My eighty-five. That might be my largest. That drop. is quite. <laughs> I have some. 
I mean, all reality, you're right. Like, let's just throw this game away. <laughs> like, 64 <laughs> spaces, it sucks. <clears throat> My number 85 was 79 last year. Again, because I haven't played it a whole lot. That's six spaces. I know, but it's... Not <laughs> 64! Uh, who, who can uh, beat that now? <laughs> Takenoko. Okay. Um, the Panda Game. Yeah. Uh, the Panda Game! This was one I bought because, well, I was at that time when I got this, my daughter's reader, <coughs> and I was trying to find something we could play as a family. Mm -hmm. um, but before I bought it, I actually played a friend's copy of the super version of it. Oh, the big With version. a panda that's this tall, oh and the, the, the hexes panda. are this big. Jesus. You know, and stuff. Uh, it was it was fun that yeah. way, and then you go and you buy the retail. It's like the yeah, it's like, like, oh, tall, yeah. you know. But but um, <clears throat> I it worked perfectly for the family. You know, mm -hmm. like it's very simplistic as far as um, I think the hardest thing for younger people to figure out is is the irrigation, trying to get the water. Oh uh, yeah, back to, to the water or from the water you know, to water your lands and stuff. Um, this is one of those I will call it an evergreen gateway. Uh, deal just because it's super simple. It it brings in uh, set collection and uh, you know getting your figuring out how to complete your cards with right. certain bamboo and stuff like that. And oh, yeah, because the panda eats the bamboo. And yeah. yeah, and then it brings in mild player interaction because of the dice. And then mm -hmm. if it's you, you, you they get scared and you need to move the <laughs> move the panda so we can go eat something. You can yeah. always move them over to somebody else's to nibble on their bamboo yeah, yeah. and stuff, and then you get the bamboo from that. And so it's just, it's it's a good gateway game because it introduces several other aspects to more complex games that you'll get them into eventually. Um, but it's done cutesy, so it's the feelings aren't hurt when you do stuff as much, you know. <laughs> oh, panda. Yeah, <laughs> and I haven't even done the Chibi expansion. Oh yet. yeah, I have it. Small expansion. But um. A little baby panda expansion and stuff. I haven't messed with them yet, but but uh, you know, it's not bad. It's just a good gateway. All right, all right. My eighty-four is new to the list, which is surprising actually, because I thought I had I played this before uh, we made this list. But Mission Red Planet, second edition. I mean, really, at this point, no one's talking about the other no. one. Mission Red Planet is a fantastic game that actually I almost hated because we had just got done playing very, News very, at 11, very a very fun, fun game. party game, that we immediately went to Mission Red Planet at, like, 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So there was just a whole... And I was like, you know what? Let's try it again. And then we did, and... Oh, man, this game is so much fun. Like, it's so solid. Like, it's one of those games where everyone has the same set of, like, nine cards, and you pick one person, they, they're the people, and their special abilities that you are trying to load up your workers onto these ships because they're going to fly off to a section of the planet that has resources that you will get points for uh, for controlling these areas. You also have cards, like objectives, that you can draw that's like, control these spaces in this area, like these three spaces over there, and those are secret. You can also have cards that you can, like, lay down underneath sections of the, of the planet that could be really good or really bad. Like, I think one of them was like, oh, at the end of the game, this place is worth zero points. Right. So you can definitely hose people. You can screw people over. Like, it's kind of more cutthroat than you think it is because you can blow up people's ships as they're trying to launch or lo or take fill them up because mm -hmm. each ship can only hold a certain number of people. Right. So if you go before them, then you'll load it up before they can get there. So you're like, oh, fuck me. Um, and the thing about this game is it always ends quicker than you think it is. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just going to be like, oh my god, the game's almost over. I haven't even done anything. It is a very streamlined game. So good. Uh, like, I, I really like it. I'm glad I gave it that second chance because um, I almost didn't. Yeah, I need to play it sometime. It's been on my radar for a long time. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it'd be right up your alley. I think yeah. you would like it. Like it a lot. Um, so that's my number 84. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the only really big... It's not even big as, as the tiff I have with it is, like, we all know how I feel about cutthroat aspects. I either don't like it happening to me or I don't like to do it to other people unless it's like Rising Sun. Unless <laughs> 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 it's Rising Sun. Um, the other is, like, you actually, whenever you are going down the, uh, like, the list of... Like, you actually count down from 10 to ten to 1, so mm -hmm. it's like you feel like it's a countdown and then eventually all ships yeah. will go off. It's just aesthetically, aesthetically nice. Right. 
84! Mission Red Planet. <clears throat> Alright, my 84 is new to the list, mm -hmm. and it's going to be one that'll probably keep rising as the second edition Kickstarter comes out. Um, and it is D-Day Dice. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, pretty much, this, this is a, you can play it multiple people, but it's a solo game. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, that's the main point to it. And pretty much, you're, you're, you're going to set out a little board. Let's all just take the initial one. Let's say uh, Normandy for, you know, D-Day, okay. obviously. Um, you're going to set out a, a board. It's got your German... Uh, ramparts and all that stuff and you're okay. you're coming on and you're moving your soldiers around and you're rolling dice and other soldiers you're attacking it's you've got cards and different odds and ends and different specialty dice um it, it's 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 a it's a deep game for for being a solo yeah dice chucker you know it's um because you you have little dials that you keep track of your your uh casualties and points and all that just jazz mm -hmm. and pretty much you're just doing and it's actual missions uh from world war ii okay. all these things cool all the expansions are actual missions and it's um and you're just moving along the map doing different stuff you use a machine gunner dice and there's airborne expansions and you're huh. um it's you said there was a second edition that's coming out the kickstarter is done it's going to be delivering here in a couple months okay um i didn't back it because I didn't have money at the time, but Fletcher did, and he's probably going to sell me yeah, this. probably so, get rid of it. So that's why I can't own games anymore. Yeah. Does it just flip I keep telling him. I was like, I was like, so when, uh, when you get that, just let me know. Yeah, I'll and then I'll buy it from you. <laughs> uh, I've thought about getting the first edition. I owned the first edition at one point. Uh huh. Um, <coughs> as, uh, and I thought about getting it again because I just had the retail, and I want like right. the Kickstarter. Right. I want everything. Stuff. But um, need my need my fix. <laughs> they they redone the dice because the first edition the dice weren't as as good a quality they were poopy. and now the second edition is a lot better the art's more even better and stuff so it's a really good solo game though it's probably one of the better solo games that i have played Alrighty, awesome sounds like a blast <laughs> all right my number 83 actually rose from 92 so that is uh nine spaces rose nine spaces which surprisingly i, I didn't realize it was actually so far back last year, I mean, still at 83, and that's Kingsburg. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I played that one. Yes, you have. It's a uh, wonderful game. Uh, so Kingsburg is a dice placement game uh, where you are rolling your dice. You have a set of three dice, and you are trying to land on basically these advisors that will give you certain things. So if I roll a five, three, and a two... Then I can, on my turn, I can add them all up. So I have, I can place them all three on the ten to get that person's uh, ability, or I can, you know, separate it out and go on the two, then a three, then the five, and get three turns. But the problem is each advisor can only help one person, so uh, other people might meet with them before I can. And it's literally you are trying to gather these resources and abilities. Are you looking for which me? version do you have? I have the first one. I don't have the second. One. I, I'm not going to buy the second edition. It's a waste of money. I'm thinking about getting the second edition because it, <laughs> I adds, don't it adds more it, cards. And boo, stuff. Oh, it adds like three I new know, cards. I like, know. I'm not spending 50 bucks on a I new. Know. And the art love the game. shit. It's, it's like a, it's a, one of my. Yeah. Spoiler uh, alert, high rated <laughs> games. So, so I mean, you're, you're get, getting these uh, resources to buy, uh, a, like, buildings. Not, not buy buildings. Build buildings off of this chart that will will help you throughout the rest of the game and you go through these the four seasons and at the end of winter uh you're about to be attacked so um a very probably piece good piece of advice is win those battles because the benefits are like the detriments for losing suck like like it's gonna hurt you um so it's i mean it's i think it's a simple game it's fun to bring out it's so high because it hardly hits the table yeah um but it is a very <laughs> solid game the yeah. last time i played it though did i did i win i think denton and i tied we have to pl uh, yeah, playing with the expansions a month <coughs> oh yeah for to forge a realm is, <coughs> yeah. a, is, is a must have just because it gives a variety otherwise everyone has the same buildings to build from but this one adds one it adds more and also Variety. It has modules. There's yeah. event cards. There's there's uh, people that you start out with. It has a starting game power, different stuff. But um, if you buy the new version of it, 
Did you find it? Yeah. If you if you buy the new version of it, it comes with Forge Realm yeah. included and stuff. Uh, the art. So I guess yeah. If different. you don't own it, then you can get the second edition. Yeah. But if you do. And, I mean, I own the original and the expansion, and there's no need for me to no, buy the... I just, I, you know, that was just them trying to get some money. <laughs> um, uh, any negative? Uh, I do not remember his name in the slightest. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 even it's looking the, at it. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the best dice placement games. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I will tell you is you, you, you can use the same spot as somebody if you have the Envoy. Oh, you're that's right. That's the only thing. You're like, right, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's always my... My uh, way to how I play is like you is, always go is, for I the always make sure, I always make sure and have the envoy. Gotcha. That way I can either build two things in one burst, or I can use somebody else's spot. Oh, okay. I use the envoy until late game. Okay. I don't need it and stuff, but it's it's a pretty cool little little part. Sweet. All right. So eighty three. Eighty three. My eighty three is probably one of the older oldest games on this list. Um. It was 76 last year. It's very cutthroat. You own it. <laughs> the oldest game on this list. You have the 20th year anniversary edition right there. Uh oh, it's a birthday. I'm totally missing Survive. it. Survive. Oh! Escape oh. from Atlantis. Or 25th year anniversary. It, but you have the same edition I do. It's yeah. like 20 or 25 year. Um, Survive, <laughs> Escape from Atlantis. That, uh, for it being a family weight game and with all the cutesy meeples on that stuff it is one of the meanest damn games <laughs> it is existence. my 121 yeah Ooh. i played this my family. my family loves it this and, like, game terrifies me and they and they <laughs> and they don't like my oldest daughter hates being picked on like that but she mm. knows she can just come right back at you and screw you over with shark thing, throw you out such sharks it's, it's and, such light-hearted cut like i've never like i'm, I'm like <clears throat> yep yep kill cool. that's fine like, yeah, that's terrifying. If I'd want to be dead too, if I was swimming in the middle <laughs> of the ocean. But um, I do like the. Uh, I mean, because like all the meeples have numbers on the bottom of them, and the mo and at the end of the game, how you you don't know how many victory points you have until at the very end of the game you get to look at the bottom of your meeples and mm -hmm. see see how many oh, points I got you two. have. <laughs> right, because um, so you get to look at them at the beginning. But then everything's getting shuffled around throughout yeah. the game. You're on boats, you're falling out of boats, you're moving, you forget unless you're have a brilliant mind. It's your rain man. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, it's just it's just hilarious when it you start getting fun. all the you know, to knock you out of the boat so then I don't want to control the shark oh, yeah. you or yeah. I wanna make that land sink, you know, and do all this stuff. It's just it, it's great. And I never have I have not played the space one and I, I don't even know if I want to. I, like I probably won't. Like this this one is the perfect theme for this game mm -hmm. and and you also have to don't let people because some people played. I've played with some people that allow looking at their meeples throughout what? the game to see yeah. what the scores are. To hell with that. <laughs> that I was like, boring, right? Yeah. You 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 need to strategically place them and then yeah. try to right. Like know. pretty much my strategy is I'm like, okay, here's my four and here's my four, and I'm just I just focus on them. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, once if I can get at least a few of those guys on on shore, then I'm just hoping for the best. <laughs> well, what most people do that I play is they they place their their fours mm -hmm. close and start moving them first. Yeah. I always put my high numbers right smack in the middle and I just, I rush my ones. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, they're going to kill all them. And yeah. then I just kind of sneak my fours in our late game, you know? Yeah. yeah. But no, it's just a, a really good game, holds up super well. It does. Um, getting I, the expansions, yeah. there's like the dolphin expansion. I have uh, that. Yeah, the five to six and, player uh, dolphin and squid. Aquila squid, yeah. And they pull people out of the boats. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> so, but there's sea monster too that does stuff yep. that, you know, it's just. Oh yeah, the sea monsters. Yep. Yeah, because it collapses boats and stuff too, doesn't it? Yeah, they the sea right. monsters destroy everything. Yeah. Whales destroy boats. Sharks eat people. Squids yeah. pull people off boats. It's I just, think. I think. And dolphins and uh, dolphins protect, protect you from, from sharks. sharks and everything else. Yeah. But it sucks because it's like I had one guy swimming in the middle, and I moved a dolphin to him, and someone else rolled a dolphin and made it move away, and I'm oh, like, no, no, no. <laughs> But no, it's, it's a wonderful game that's uh, still the test of time. You know, if a sure. dolphin came up to me in the middle of the ocean, I'd probably try to kill that, too. Because I'm like, you're here to rape me! <laughs> <laughs> Everything's evil! That's Everything's good... evil. Alright, my number 82 is a game you've already mentioned. This segment. This segment? Deception? Deception! Murder in Hong Kong. It's new to the, new to the list. Uh, no, this, thing, this game is, is fantastic. Uh, works with any, not any number of people, but... 
Like the higher the higher the better. Like I I really like this game. That one time we played with like eight people, man. There was one thing I don't know if you ended up mentioning it. Everything you said was was correct and awesome. But my favorite part about this game is that the forensic scientist, yeah, he has his clues and he has to sit there and, and be quiet and probably internally ang angry. Uh, and the the problem with this game is that the murderer is also the one, yeah, yeah, like, well, what right. about, it's like most of the time, for some reason, uh, everyone, like, seems to go towards the murderer, but then they're just like, well, what about all those? And everyone's like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> because there's, they, there's, well, that I know he said angry, towels are pretty angry. Right, that yeah, that, you know, that really deck are. of items and stuff that's out in front mm -hmm. of you and everything, they're, they're so... So the clues are so vague that you that murder can make an argument for anything, anything on that board. out there, yeah. And yeah. it's that's why it's so difficult. Cause right, right. Because you're playing yeah. like I've played this with <clears throat> five people before, and oh no, I've I've won a, uh, a few a few more times than, than just the ones. <gasps> I'm actually never the murderer. <laughs> funny enough, <laughs> but yeah, you're sitting there and like it's like okay, weather sunny, and then. Emotive, angry, and then the, it was messy. Whatever condition of the scene, and then everyone's just making their arguments on. Uh, and usually, what I'll do, my strategy is, I will hear what everyone is trying to mm -hmm. say, and, every, and then I will, like, it, and I have been the murderer before, um, but I'll I'll use my token first round, and then I'm like, okay, well, everyone thinks it's this. Great, we can uh, either get that out of the way. If it's if we win, then we win. If we're wrong, then at least we can move on to something else. Right. Uh, but, or, well, last time I was the murderer, uh, people kept thinking it was me, and I guessed on my own, and I'm like, there, it's not me. <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, hey, it really was, it just wasn't those two, you <laughs> idiots! <laughs> so, Deception Murder in Hong Kong is fantastic. It, it, that could stay where it's at, or go up based off how well right. the expansion is. I, I think that's the first it. game I ever played with you guys. Uh, it was, yeah, at least, I, yeah, I know it was with then. you. I think that was our first, because yeah. everyone talked about you, but you were never there, because yeah. you actually hate us. But. Oh. You're here doing That's why he drove all the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll bounce off of what you said. Um, I think it's weird that the murderer plays with you. Oh, they kind of do it in the resistance yeah. too. I know, but like that makes sense because you're a spy. Like, yeah. I know that the murderer refers <laughs> to the scene of the crime, but the murderer is not like I'm the detective too. <laughs> yeah, you've never worked for this agency before. You look I like... have a badge, so that's drawn and crowned. <laughs> well, we're gonna like need like you to Dexter. arrest you. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. really what it is. Uh, and then eventually, I leave to become a lumberjack because that show is garbage. Uh, <laughs> do you do that? I never finished. That it. was the final a spoiler for I, the shitty show Dexter. They keep trying to bring it back. They oh, do. Really? Uh, I wish they would. I wish so they wouldn't. I, got I love that show. One. It got it just the got last season got it, kind of boring, kind of out weird, but. I heard. Yeah. It. Anyway, that's my eighty-two <laughs> deception right. murder in Hong Kong. My number eighty-two is probably one of my favorite go-to. Um, games. games for people that don't play games, and you know, like if I was going to go to. And, you know, the school event and bring a game. You're just like a kid's house. No, 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 no. Why would you go to a kid's uh, house? You want to play some games? It was 77 last year, 82 this year. It's King of Tokyo. Ah, a um, game I have never played. I've never played I've King, never King, played King of Tokyo. Have, have you have a board game channel? <laughs> I know, it's like, I don't think... Uh, I have played uh, Ticket to Ride. <laughs> I don't own it. Uh, yeah, I've never King played. King of Tokyo is just such a fun game. It could be over in like 10 minutes. I mean, yeah. it's... Gosh, we got to remedy that. <laughs> Quickly, I know. Um, but uh, it, it used like Yahtzee style. You p you pick a kaiju or whatever you want, something stupid, and only one person can be in Tokyo. Is the other the one's on the outside man of Tokyo, huh? Is the Michelin Man in there? No, I don't want to play. No, there's a Cthulhu <laughs> thing expansion. You can well, play. I gotta play it now. <clears throat> but anyway, um, if you are in Tokyo, everybody when they roll their dice, uh, any attacks attack the person in Tokyo. Whenever the the monster in Tokyo takes damage, they have the option of switching with the player that gave them damage and leave Tokyo, or staying in there and just keeping up with it, because you get you get points for being in Tokyo oh, okay. for a while, so you're trying to hedge how long you want to stay in there, but mm -hmm. if it looks like you're about to die, switch with the person that just gave you damage. Because if you're, but if you're in Tokyo when it's your turn and you roll dice, your attack hits everybody Everyone. outside. Oh, okay. So, and then you can, there's heart on the dice, there's attacks, there's hearts, which heal, there's um, stars, stars, which are victory points, because you each, you have a dial with your monster on it. And stuff. Oh, okay. Um, and then 
you have cards that you can buy because you get energy. There's little lightning bolts that are these green energy things. Mm -hmm. You can spend those energies to buy power ups. No, I'm assuming you're talking cards. about with the power up pack. No, this is just the base game. Oh, okay. The power up's a necessity, though, yeah. and I have that. The power up, each, whatever creature you choose, has their own deck that makes them. Like Unique. you pick the King Kong one, and then there's stuff just for King Kong that you, mm -hmm. you can buy to give you powers and stuff. It just makes it more, you know, narrows it down to free now, character. Now, do you, have you played New York? <laughs> yes, I have both of them. Do you, which one do you like better? I'm assuming um, Tokyo, since you put it on the I list. like New York. I like, they both are the same game. Yeah. It's just New York added more complexity. Okay. So, like, it depends on what group you're playing with. I put Tokyo up higher because it just, it gets to the table more. It's gotcha. more, like, I'm not going to sit down with King of Tokyo, or King of New York, and try to teach somebody. Like, I would always do King of Tokyo first, and if they love that game and it's their best game, then go to King of New York. Okay. All the monsters, though, can be used with King of Tokyo. It's like the monsters are, oh, okay. are so universal. Um, but King of Tokyo is just, this is simplicity is why it gets up there, because you can play tons of games just in no time, just go in there you know, beat the hell out of each other and yeah. all good. Yeah. I and mean, then that's last, because you win by either reaching whatever the victory point total is. That's 15, if you can reach, the first person to reach 15 victory points, I believe it is, wins, or if you're the last one standing. Those are your winning missions. All right. And you just, it's just awesome, hmm. you know, super easy, super fun. Know. Never played it. <laughs> you just lost all credibility. <laughs> your list sucks now. That's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> My, the last one for this segment is new to the list, uh, and it is Dark Souls the Card Game. Uh, fantastic new deck building game that basically took the best parts of the board game and put it into the card game, which the best parts of the board game were the boss fights. So those are literally pretty much the exact same thing, except you don't have the weird complexity of moving miniatures around the board, they're just there. Um, and, but it still has their, their pattern, the way they attack, unique to the monster, uh, and, um, and then you have, uh, and then, and then, yeah, so then they're, they're on unique deck that will flip, and then they also have heated up cards if they take, you know, because in Dark Souls, whenever you, most monsters have multiple phases, that once they hit a threshold of health, then they will, uh, start acting up different, um, but then you have the, the, deck building part of it where you actually have control over what character you want to build um, and I just I really like it like I, I hope they keep supporting it because just more and more monsters um, are gonna be fun and more or more bosses to fight because I, I thoroughly enjoy the different types of classes that you can start out with with your own unique weapons and what's really cool and I, and I forgot to mention this about some of the cards is that there's actually different types of attack. Like if you play a short sword and you want to do this type of attack, it'll go back into your hand. Mm -hmm. Or it can go back into your deck, but if you want to do a really powerful one, that's when it gets discarded. But you have to play the, the, the stamina kind of cards. It's like, I need to play two, per, uh, two yellows with this attack. And it'll do this, it'll do this type of attack, and it'll do this much damage, but then I have to get rid of all those cards. Right. So you actually have some control over what kinds of attacks that you want to do. Then the enemies are all unique, but it's just so streamlined, and I very much like it. I wish they had just done this, um, but their board game that they just did, because the miniatures were awesome, right. but the game was not. So that's my 81, Dark Souls, the card game. I've never played it. All right. Uh, my 81 is new to the list, and it will be one that will definitely go higher on this list. I just haven't played it a whole lot, mm -hmm. but I know I'm going to enjoy it, uh, is Viticulture. Ah, uh, um, I've you had it. Played that? Well, I have now. Oh, because uh, I, I played it before. I got it for Christmas last year. Gotcha. Um, and uh, I've only played it like maybe, maybe two times total. Because I think I played it once a long a while back, mm -hmm. and I got played mine. Um, it will go up higher. I just haven't played it as much to really get into the strategies of it and yep. stuff. Um, it's a beautiful game. You know, the wine making thing mm -hmm. is a theme. I'm not really keen on but it doesn't matter with this game it, right it, it, it works with this game yeah um and i think it's super thematic yeah it is because I, I have the essential edition of it and then the tuscany expansion okay. so uh you know and then i got all the metal coins and stuff too yep. so it's just it just looks awesome mm -hmm. uh, it has the wonderful solo mode the auto moda or whatever the 
just like what Scythe has, okay. has that, that solo thing that Stonemeyer uses for yep. a lot of their games. Yep. So you can play it solo and do all that stuff. Um, it's just a brilliant design yep. that I want to really dig into more. Um, that's why it's so low on this list. I want. I want to. It'll probably be a top twenty game mm -hmm. once I really start really getting into it. Yeah, I mean, I think with the success of Scythe, mm -hmm. like, and Charter Stone, like mm -hmm. Stonemaier Games, it's like super hot right now. People right. are going back to Vidi Culture. They're mm -hmm. you know, between two cities and stuff like that. Right. They. I mean, they just make solid, solid games. And I actually played this with John. That's how I found out about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this game is super good. And then we played it not too long ago um, with, with uh, Dalen. Um, Did we? How do you not remember games? <laughs> like, it, it, it was one with the beads, and you had to you had to grow your your vines. Which okay, yeah, you, okay, yeah, no, I do remember. Oh, yeah, Sorry. I think you were drunk when we were playing it. You I probably like, was drinking wine. wine. Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> this, is, this is my highest rated Stonemaier game. Is it? Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, because I, uh, I remember I kept getting confused. I was like, what the fuck is a trellis? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that is this segment, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Once again, stick around for the rest of the top 100. Uh, just They just get better uh, from here. The videos will probably get longer because we'll have more to say about. It's like, <laughs> we're really passionate. But I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell, click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.